are you square? As square as they come, Jerry. No, you're not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, anyway. But in addition to that, we need to make sure that the studs are 16 inches on center and on plane with each other so that the backer board stays flat. Right. Now, we would do this in any application because it's my house. I want to make sure that we protect the studs. So we're going to put down some liner as well, right? Absolutely. Good. An important part of a tub installation is the proper placement of furring strips. The furring strips and tubs allow the backer board to remain straight or flat when bridging the tub flange. If they were not used, the backer board would be forced to bend out over the flange when installed over the tub face. Now, Paul, as you can see, the furring strips in this tub area are placed directly onto the face of the studs prior to the placement of the water sheathing membrane that will follow. Okay, before you put on your water sheathing membrane, you want to make sure you mark your studs so you can find them when you want to put your backer board layer on. So we just mark a little spot on the ceiling where we can bring our level down and we know right where our stud is. Most backer board manufacturers recommend a water sheathing membrane be installed behind the board in tub enclosures. The water sheathing membrane simply helps to prevent accumulated moisture that passes through the tile work from reaching uninvolved areas behind the installation. In this case, the water sheathing membrane consists of 15 pound roofing felt. As you can see, the water sheathing membrane is cut and tacked into place over the furring strips we installed earlier. The edges should overlap a minimum of two inches in the horizontal and six inches in the vertical, and the sheet should be installed roofing style from the bottom to the top. The bottom sheet must completely overlap the tub flange. This allows any accumulated moisture to run down the wall recesses, over the tub flange, and into the tub itself. Beautiful. Okay. Up in here. Around to this side. And right there. Perfect. Good. Okay, now before we put in the backer board, we want to make sure that we don't end up with any tiny cuts at the back. So we need a measurement. So we've moved to an area where we can lay out the tile dry and get that measurement from our trim piece, which in this case is surface bull nose. So when we measure, we know that our back that our backer board needs to be at least in this area so they won't end up with a small cut and then that'll be fine. Right. Ideally what we'd want is we'd want to have this trim on the outside apron of the tub. You know you can definitely pull in some different colors and have a lot of fun because this is actually going in my daughter's bathroom so she's going to have a blast. It needs to be right and the neat thing about this tile some of these tiles come with lugs that are already fastened to the tile or actually molded in and this allows for the tile to be butted together and it forms a natural 16th joint for unsanded grout. It's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah, very nice. The backer board in this tub is a straightforward and easily accomplished proposition. Half inch thick panels are cut to fit and placed over the water sheathing membrane. The panels should not rest on the tub, but should extend past the top of the flange. Holding the backer board up above the top of the tub about a quarter of an inch will work nicely. Okay, we're going to start cutting our backer board. Now, if you don't have a power tool such as a circular saw or a roto zip or anything like that, you're going to have to cut this by hand. Right. So you want to maybe get a couple of blades <laughs> for your box cutter because this Blade. stuff is tough. So you ready? Well, we'll mark it first to fit the space. We'll put a couple of pencil marks where we need them. This one's 32. So make a pencil mark there. Thank you, sir and 32 down along that other edge, this will give us the spot to put our straight edge. In this case, we're just going to use a piece of lumber that's nice and straight. We'll put it on the marks. All righty. There's our marks. OK. Line that up there. Now, you want to keep your straight edge very tight to the board, because it'll move on you as you score it. Right. Now, here's another tip, too. If you're working by yourself, get some clamps, and you can clamp it down on either oh, edge. Oh, there you go. There you go. And you can score it. All right. Like I said, we're going to have to score this a couple of times. Really deep on back of the board. OK, you ready? Yeah. There it is. When we put the board in, we want to make sure we space it that quarter of an inch off the top of the tub. Right. And what are we going to use? Perfect. We're going to be using one of our wall tiles to just lift it up off of the, uh, the rim of the tub. That's right. Also, what we're going to be using, we're going to be using a 1 and 5 8 inch screws uh, to attach it to our wall, to our studs. And we also want to make sure, right, Paul, uh, that we wrap that felt paper. That's right. And these are corrosion resistant backer board screws that are one and five eighths. That gets a full three quarters of an inch into the stud behind all this, That's which perfect. is important. All right, here we go. You need some help there, big guy? Yeah, is that probably. That's too heavy. I tell you what, we want I'll to do. make sure that we want to make sure that paper stays yep. underneath the board. Got it. 
Okay, we're good on the bottom. All right. Now let me pop. The, can you lift it up just yep. a little bit? We're gonna pop that tile under there. Got it. Make sure it's against the stud face. Excellent. Now we want to make sure that that paper wraps around this board so that water, any accumulated moisture in the board, won't go into the drywall. That's the important thing. Very nice. Look good here. Yeah. Good over here, nice and tight, actually. Good. I'm gonna go ahead and just that's a, good. A couple of the screws. You want to start throwing some in? Yeah. Well, what we gotta mention is that we made those nifty marks on the ceiling, right? Yeah. Remember those? Uh huh. Well, we want to line those up on the board and make us a little pencil mark. Just so at first we would just want to put one or two screws in to hold this thing in place. I'll hold it. You we got a screw. It. Yeah. We just have a screw. Now these particular uh, backer board screws have this little square drive bit that actually comes with with the screws in the same little case. And this is going to go right right into the stud. And look at how this screw just is flush with the board. You don't want to over penetrate on this board because the surface is all of your strength. Once the panels are all in place, the gaps or joints between the panels are completely filled with thinset, and alkalide-resistant backerboard tape is placed in the fresh thinset. The joints then receive a skim coat of fresh mortar as thin as possible. The walls are then allowed to cure per the manufacturer's recommendations. Be really careful not to let that teeth grab that tape. Now we're ready for our layout. Right. Now we're using six-inch tiles, right, Paul? That's correct. Okay. So we just want to make sure on this back wall that we don't have a teeny tiny little sliver on one side. All right. This allows us just to cut one wall instead of both. Excellent. So what do we have down there? Uh, we've got a full tile plus almost three quarters of another one. Okay, so this is 58 inches divided by six. Right. So that would be nine plus three fourths of another tile. Right. So we would put the cut tile down here in the corner, right? Well, yeah, and especially since when people come through the door, this is the first thing they're going to see. Right. So that'll be good. Excellent. We had to create a wood ledger along the base of our tub because unfortunately in our application the tub was not level. So in order to get a straight line for our first course of tile, we had to create this ledger to make sure everything would be in good order as we worked our way up the wall. Also, oh, Paul and Joe, Joe laid out our with, tiles with so that we could get a good idea of where our cuts were going we're to be. About 32 and 3 quarters, which is just perfect. We are at the exciting part of our project now because we're ready to start setting some tiles. And I'm sure they want to see that. <laughs> I think so. Now, here are the spacers that Paul's going to be putting in between our tiles. This is an eighth of an inch thick. You can go as wide as a half inch if you really want to, depending upon where you're putting it before our wall application, we're going to do eighth of an inch. Right. And with these tiles, remember, you can actually stack these together to create a, a sixteenth of an inch joint, but we chose an eighth. So, in any tiling project, uh, whether it's backer board, mortar bed, whatever, there's just some certain steps that you need to know when you're setting tile. And that is, of course, you have to have thin set that's mixed per the manufacturer's instructions. And the first thing you're going to do is put some on your wall, and you're going to do a process we call keying in the mortar. And that is with the flat side of the trowel, you're simply going to push it firmly into the backer board so that it completely bonds or becomes attached to the backer board. The next step is combing the mortar out. And that just simply means that you're holding the trowel at the same angle, consistent angle, while you're applying it. I'll slow down a little bit so you can see it. <laughs> consistent angle on the trowel, okay? That's the whole point. That makes sure that the thin set is the same depth so that when you put the tiles on the substrate, in this case backer board, that they're all at a level, okay? Once you've done that, you're going to start setting your tile. But if you put out too much and wait too long, this will start to set up or skin over. Especially because it's so hot in here, too. Oh, yeah. Very hot. <laughs> Thank you very much. But you'll know if it skins over just simply by touching it. If it comes off on your finger, you can still set tile on it. All right, Paul. So that looks beautiful. Right, cool. So here's some tile. We're ready to go. And here's a spacer. Okay, well, we're going to leave this off the wall about the thickness of a tile because we know that while this while this wall is really good, there might be little imperfections in right. it, especially with backer board. Right. So that's our first one. Okay. Now, with that squeeze right there, if you left that in place, 
that's going to come out between the tiles. So we're just going to cut that off. Sweet. So we put the next having one to in. Wash it off later. Absolutely. And what you're doing is you're making sure that your edges line up. You don't have any lippage, you know, height difference tile to tile. Right, right. You're going to put your spacers in. Right? Mm hmm. And it looks like we got the same problem over here. We're using a little bit thicker setting bed to make sure we got plenty of coverage. Absolutely. Behind these tiles, 95%, right? Right. And we just keep going. Nice and more spacers. We keep going. Good. Good. Now what we do is we just continue down the wall and right up to the ceiling. I love it. Since we're using ceramic tiles on our walls, it's really easy for us to make our cuts with a simple tile cutter. Now you can get this tile cutter at any of your local hardware stores. You can also rent it if you don't want to purchase it. But the nice thing about this is that you mark your ceramic tile with a pencil and then you score across the top with the diamond knife or blade that's actually on the tile cutter. And then what you do is you pop it and you get a nice clean cut. Now if you've got a smaller piece of ceramic tile that you need to cut, say less than a half inch, then what you might want to do is consider getting your margin trowel and placing it underneath it so that when you mark it and score it and pop it, it won't sliver into several different pieces. Well, we're three more levels up. We've already put our level on to make sure that it's all flat across the top. And we are ready for our liner, or some people might call a border. Some people kind of have a different school of thought on how high to put your border or your liner. Mm -hmm. uh, some say that it needs to go at a chair rail height. Some people may even say at an eye level height. Personally, what I like to do is walk into a room and let my border make a dramatic statement. So I'm prone to actually take it even a little higher than, say, your eye level, because it just kind of creates this nice little element. But it really, again, it's up to you and what you want. You'll notice that this has a real rough edge. Can't really use that for trim. So it's going to go behind our surface bullnose here, and there's going to be a cut piece of surface bullnose that's going to finish this edge. It's going to be beautiful. It will be, and yep. I think we can get to it. Again, we're just making sure, let me see that margin trowel. Right. We're just making sure that our trowel stays at the same, almost a 45 degree angle to the backer board. Now we're ready for our liner. <clears throat> Remember, you have to leave space for your bullnose trim out here. And it's really just a matter of putting it in, lining it up, and make sure all the pieces get embedded into the thinset bed. Pretty simple, huh? Oh, got another one. Yep. Okay. In there. <clears throat> now sometimes, what you hand me that uh, grout float. Sometimes it's necessary, if you have little small pieces on a mesh like this, to sort of use a flat side. You can use a grout float like this, or, or even maybe a short piece of 2x4, something that's flat, to push up against all those pieces to make sure they all go flat into the thin set. Very nice. Little Very nifty nice. trick. Yeah. You take your next piece, put it in there, use your grout float, just like that. Pretty. Isn't that nice? And even these have joints. You just kind of line them up. With rubble, that is the look. That's the way it's supposed to look. Now, when you're running ceramic tile on your ceiling, a lot of people might get intimidated by the fact that a placing tile on your ceiling uh, might be hazardous because it might fall on your head. But that's not necessarily so because the thin set is designed to get a really good suction to the wall, whether it's a vertical or a horizontal surface. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a minute about grout because this is actually the tile colors uh, and choices that we're going to be using in my